Okay, so let's get started. So this is week nine, day two. So today we're gonna to talk about checkpoint two, which is the audio codec ADA register configuration. So this is EE2902, spring 2013, week nine, lecture two. So this is uh, ADA register. So ADA stands for analog to digital and digital to analog register configuration. So this is project checkpoint two. Okay. So on tomorrow, we'll pretty much wrap up the project in the sense uh, we won't talk about the project after this. Next week, I'll give you another design example of how to interface to a VGA display. So you kind of see, uh, well, a different design example, and that's about it, right? So let's look at where we are. As far as checkpoint one is concerned, I'll post the solution to it on this website, Digital Systems website, uh, later today. So checkpoint one, uh, most of you have gotten both of these working. It's obviously the audio codec controller. I'll post a solution to this. Let's look at checkpoint two. So checkpoint two is, so the ADC-DAC interface, what you have to implement are basically two modules, okay? Number one is the audio PLL clock generator, and the other is the ADC DAC data transfer controller. Again, understand the idea from the top level, the big picture. So what is the big picture? Is, well, here it is. You have configured, if you go back to your register configuration from checkpoint one, there is your I squared C initialization data you basically configured the ADC DAC controller in left justified mode, okay? So what do you have to generate, what do you need are basically, I hate this, no, dude. What you basically need are two counters, right? One is to count out the bit clock. And the second is to tell the ADC DAC module on the audio codec, are you sending data to the left channel or are you sending data to the right channel? Okay. Now, the number of bits you're going to use is 16. Again, how do you know this? It's from here. Okay. So if you look at this, um, blah, blah, here. Register 7, the way you configured the bits is 16 bits, MSB first, left justified mode. Okay. There are other modes which you can use. And if you want to know what the other modes are, let's see. Audio signal path, device software control interface. Okay, maybe it's before this. All right. So here's a description of, ah, here it is, okay. So you have different modes, right? I'm just using this one, the left justified mode, okay. All right, so getting back to this. So what you need is this bit clock being generated, and that's basically coming from your read through this, right? The audio PLL clock, what it does is it takes in a 27 megahertz board clock and steps it down to 18.4 megahertz, technically, right, using the PLL. And once you do that, from there you can generate the bit clock, and notice you trigger on the falling edge of the bit clock, right? So 16 counts because n equals 16 of the falling edge of the bit clock, you swap the DAC left, right, and they, well, the DAC and the ADC, they use the same left, right frame clocks. This is called as a frame clock, okay? This is the bit clock, is that clear? So checkpoint two is very simple in the sense that you just have a bunch of counters, that's it, okay? So if you will, checkpoint two, is basically counters. That's it. So do you have any questions on like checkpoint one? You should all be like, even if you didn't finish it, do you have any questions on it? Yeah. Yeah, so the question was, okay, so Ezra's question is, in checkpoint one, do you service 
they acknowledge okay well that's up to you in the sense that you have a finite state machine where you have an acknowledged state yes so in there if the bit you get is high then you can either stop the finite state machine or resend the data so it's up to you do you service the acknowledge uh, answer uh, up to you okay ideally what you should do is uh, some like error send an error message what you should do is send an error message to the user and then retry transmission okay for example is that clear yeah retry where you failed like you, so you send the address it doesn't acknowledge and then you resend the address again for example but the problem with this is if you don't get an acknowledge that probably most likely means your protocol is off so it doesn't matter if you retry the transmission if you still have an error okay in your protocol like let's say you're off by one clock cycle you're still going to keep you're going to go into an infinite loop with this is that clear so what you should do is send an error message and then like stop so this whole acknowledge business is for data like if there is data corruption as you send the data to the codec then you utilize the acknowledge but in this case it really doesn't make sense because the chip is on the board right let's say you are doing tcp ip what does tcp ip stand for so example where it really helps is tcp ip almost it's not telecommunications protocol yes transmission control protocol good protocol now you should know this what does ip stand for internet protocol okay so here error correction is very important why long distance simple right so yeah that's so in other words servicing acknowledge here gives you practice on practic in practical systems but i don't require you to do that i don't require you to service the acknowledge right you just see in signal tap if it's getting pulled low if it's getting pulled low you're set okay any other questions on checkpoint 1 Uh, I'm gonna send out checkpoint one at like today evening. I'll like by five. I just have to go and post it online. That's all I gotta do. And there goes my screen. So let's do this again. All right, we're back in business. So. Checkpoint one, I mean checkpoint two is basically counter. So let me just finish checkpoint three as well. Uh, let's see, ADA register configuration, uh, and then neuron model realization, which is checkpoint three. Do you have any other questions on checkpoint one? Okay, so let's look at checkpoint three. So checkpoint three. I think I already have it open. No, this is checkpoint one. So checkpoint three is you have done this from checkpoint two. Yes. I'll give you this. So this will be given. It says here you will design one component. Okay, but. Um, so I'll give you so note for checkpoint three. 
I will give you the neuron model. I'll actually post it online when I post the solution to checkpoint one. I just realized it as I was writing this. I'll give you the neuron model. You must, you need to instantiate, so you need to do two things. You need to do two things, which are very simple. So number one is instantiate neuron model at the top level. So if you look at the solution I posted checkpoint one here, okay, inside the .zip file, the neuron model .bhd will be there, or whatever I call it, but it won't be instantiated at the top level. So you have to instantiate it. Okay, number one, it'll be part of the project, but it won't be instantiated. Number two, uh, modify checkpoint two uh, module to accept data from neuron model. And that's not too difficult, since if we look at this, oh, where is it? There it is. So it's just a screenshot of this um, design. So this will be given. Uh, let me put this in red. Instantiate. That is, you have to do this, okay? And uh, modify checkpoint two, and that's easy to do in the sense that there is like it's a very very simple. Well, you'll see it's it's just you'll see what it is right when you get to it. So just like a couple of lines, it's not hard. So in other words, the difficulty of the project, like I promised you, will decrease. Checkpoint one is like a lot of work. Checkpoint two is just counters. Checkpoint three is just instantiation and a couple of lines. Yeah, that's it. So that's about it for the project. That means uh, what I'll do is, since I finished up with checkpoint three, what I can do is tomorrow I'll skip lecture. So, well, no, tomorrow, no lecture. Or start working on checkpoint two. Because there is nothing to talk about with respect to checkpoint three. Then let's look at the syllabus. So you continue working on uh, well, checkpoint three I already talked about, right? So next week, we'll just do uh, VGA interfacing. I don't think I'll even take two lectures for this because it's just two counters, right? One for horizontal counter, one for vertical counter. So the H-sync and the V-sync signals. And we'll connect the DE1 board to our VGA projector and we'll just change colors. It'll be that simple. So it's basically counters. Right? So then we'll wrap up the course and hopefully by now you have an idea of what this course, I mean, what sequential logic is about. It's about finite state machines, control, and data path. Data path is what? Counters, shift registers. And that's it. Yeah. And the more you practice, the more you get used to all the nuances of realizing uh, sequential logic systems. For example, you had to knot the clock to, so your system, you ran on the rising, you triggered on the rising edge, the data was, uh, so when you knotted the clock, the data was ready on the ice for the I squared C bus. Uh, on the falling edge, yeah. so that's about it. Okay, so your project again is due only in week 11. Actually, let me talk about this. So your project report, okay, so since we have time, and there were questions in the lab, so let's, how much time do we have? Oh, we have plenty of time. So let me just talk about project report, right? Project report, so number one, actually, project uh, wrap up. Number one, project is due uh, 5 p.m. CST. So you have to get checked off. Uh, uh, check off project by Friday 
of week 11. This is your ultimate deadline in the sense you can get checked out before this. 5 p.m. CST. Okay, number one. Report, number two, report is also due by Friday of week 11, 5 p.m. CST. This is via email, PDF only. Don't send it to me in DocX. Okay. I will take off points if you do that. It's just simple. Just send it a PDF. Right? So what is the report format? You need to have an introduction. Like, what are you trying to do? Okay. Introduction. Well, what are you trying to do? It can be like a uh, few sentences. Okay. And what you should do is, you should ideally write this. And the introduction is like the abstract. Okay. So ideally. Write or type this section after finishing the rest of report. That's what usually when you that's what you do when you usually type abstracts. Okay, so it's a condensed so it's introduction or abstract. You can even title it abstract. It's a condensed uh, description of your project, and usually. When you write research papers or uh, documents, the abstract is what is posted online. So people can have an idea of the relevancy of your project to what they're trying to do. Okay. Yeah, it's the abstract or introduction is the only part of the report that's ever read. Okay. Second is methodology. And in this this should basically be a description of the check of your solutions to the checkpoints. Your solutions to the checkpoints. Okay, so what worked, what didn't work, support your description using, um, I don't know, FSMs, finite state machine, FSM, finite state machine diagrams. Uh, let's see. Model sim simulations, okay. And if you if you in, if you take screenshots of model sim simulations, the background is black, but I'll put this in red. There is a way to change it to white, okay. So in other words, do not use black background. And these are all obvious. I'm not gonna sit down and tell you all the obvious things. Uh, model some simulations. For example, another thing which is obvious is all figures should be numbered. Okay. Uh, model some simulations are like signal tap data, etc. For the FSMD, you can take screenshots of the state machine viewer, but uh, it may not be helpful. Right? It's better if you just use like Visio, for example, to draw FSMs. So everything should be typed. Okay. Be electronic because I can't read handwriting. It's hard. Okay. Third is conclusion. Uh, so, what did you learn from the project? How would you improve the project? The length, um, there is no upper bound, but a good report would be less than or equal to 10 pages. Okay. So single sided, I mean, like whatever, uh, single spaced, however you want it. Okay. Uh, so actually, it depends. Make it like single, double spaced, okay, because it's easier to do corrections. Okay. And it should be Times New Roman. These are all obvious things, right? 12 point. Don't make it like 10 point and try to. If it's a bad report, we'll know, okay? So, any other questions on the report? I know this came up during lab yesterday. Like, what is the report on? Oh, yeah, one per team. Thank you. One per team.
with a single person dealing with one per person. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> the question was, is it too late to start working with a partner? Actually, no, but what you, you guys, the hardest part is checkpoint one. So after this, there's no point in getting a partner. No, it's easy, man. It doesn't take just, so it's, okay, so the way you practice, so what I would recommend you do is you take a piece of paper, trust me, and write it out, okay? Don't type as you think. It, that's, it'll, it's more work in the long run. So write everything out and then just transcribe it. That's how you minimize work. Just write out on a piece of paper exactly what you're trying to say. Think, if you think about it, it's easier to erase when you're writing, okay, number one. Number two, more important, it's easier to see the entire report. You can flip the pages around. It's, you're, you'll be a lot more productive in the long run instead of just starting to type. It's like, oh, because you can't really type in like a flow because you really have to think. So the report is actually not that hard, and yeah, it's it, yeah, it's too late to start getting uh, to have partners because they already gave me that sheet. But like I said, checkpoint two is just counters. Okay, you basically need three counters, I think, and checkpoint three is like nothing. You just instantiate and you add. Okay. So you should, although I give you till Friday of week eleven, which is like two weeks from tomorrow, you can finish the project by next week. That's what I recommend you do. You finish it by next week and then take Friday of week 11 to write the report. Do not work on the report the day before it's due. You'll get stressed out. Okay. Just take like a couple of days to do it. Like a couple of days to write it. If you if you write it and then type it, the typing, you'll be surprised, okay? Number one, if you write 10 pages, for example, the typing will probably only be five pages, which is fine, okay? Like I said, there's no upper bound to the report. Uh, or there's no, actually, the good report is less than or equal to 10 pages. You can't fit it in a page. So if you write 10 pages, you'll probably get five pages of typing. Okay, and the figures will occupy some space. If you really understand what's going on in the project, this report is not that difficult. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, exams. I'll give it to you on Monday. I haven't graded them yet. So exams will come back on Monday. And what you should do next week is you should look at your uh, the grades you have so far. Well, before week, I mean, ideally in week 11. Look at it in week 11. So by week 11, you should know all your uh, uh, scores except for the final exam. Okay. All right. So let's see. So we are done. And I'll see you guys Monday.